And welcome, guys, to the Lin Contro Complex. I'm your host, Jason Crow, with my partner. Uh, my name's Jeremy Crow, and we are here with <laughs> e uh, Chesty War Eagles are going to be taking on the East Hall Vikings. East Hall is a uh, 2-0 this season with Chesity being 0-2. Oh. Not a good start out for the Chesty War Eagles, but hopefully we'll be improving tonight. But we have a, a big, big event going on. We have the homecoming. Oh, yes. So they're going to bring out all the homecoming voter or people who voted for and see who's going to make the homecoming king or queen. Yes. And East Hall right now has a second year coach named Matt Turner. His last season was 1 and 9. His regional was 8 4 A. So we'll hopefully we'll see how he comes out this with this game tonight. And um Sean Conley, I think he's in his uh fifth season. Oh. And he's had his ups and downs, but he's been really improving. Yes. Yeah. Jeff is the offense other than two years ago going oh and ten to last year going three and seven to this year starting off actually it's his seventh season. Oh it's a pretty long time for a uh, a head coach. We've um we've spoke to them over or spoke to Sean Conley to see how he's gonna improve this uh offense for this game and what the um, big things are going to happen so we're going to toss it over to him whenever we can so um whenever we whenever we really can toss him we have but right now we have the uh, the band they are coming out the baddest band in the land as they say every time we almost have 19 minutes down and counting if you want to come to the Chesty War Eagles football field and cheer on your Chesty War Eagles if you can't make it in time we got okay so we talked to uh, Sean Conley about how he's going to improve this offense again for this game so we're going to toss to him now we have the new coaches show that we're going to bring to you. Good evening. We're here with head coach Sean Conley of the Chester T. War Eagle football program as we prepare for tonight's game against East Hall. It's homecoming night. Uh, pretty big week here at school. Uh, just talk a little bit about the school, the activities going on. Uh, you know, it's a big week, uh, you know, around school, kind of leading up to this football game tonight. Yeah, homecoming week's always exciting. A lot of stuff going on. Uh, the kids are involved in a lot of different things with the homecoming court, uh, the practice, the band, and everything. It's, uh, it's a really fun time. Uh, you know, I think we've had a good week of practice this week, um, and, and I hope that it's, uh, the game's a lot of fun Friday, too. Just kind of with homecoming, a lot of events going on, you know, day to day. We have a, you know, the parade and then the pep rally. How how tough is that? It's a lot of fun, obviously, but then there's also a game to play. How do you try to limit those distractions a little bit? Is it keeping everything close together, um, you know, with the guys? And how, how is that um, trying to keep them focused a little bit? Well, sometimes that's hard. Um, but I, I think our guys are going to do a good job with it. You know, I want them to have fun. I want them to enjoy all the festivities and, and hang out with their friends and, and uh, make this a, a memory that they'll uh, hold with them for a long time. But uh, on the same note, you know, they got to be able to flip that switch and turn it back into ball game mode and get ready to uh, play football. And with that, East Hall is coming in. Pretty good on both sides of the ball, uh, but pretty quick, got a lot of size. Uh, what, what kind of challenges do they present uh, coming in towards our offense? Well, you know, the, the same thing is uh, almost every week. You know, uh, we have to be fundamentally sound and, and execute the things that, uh, that we do. Um, I think we made a huge improvement from week one to, or game one to game two, uh, and we're looking for that same type improvement this week as well. 
on the defensive side of the ball, what kind of uh, challenges really do they present on the defensive side of the ball that will kind of you know, get our offense on track a little bit? Well, East Hall is very athletic, uh, and, and they got some speed. I think that's one thing that we'll have to – you know, try to contain is their speed and athleticism and uh, be really good tacklers on defense. Um, I think that'll help create some turnovers, some stuff like that, maybe disrupt their rhythm and, and get an interception or a fumble or something like that to help us out. You mentioned a couple of pretty good practices this week. Uh, c coming off the first two games, obviously non-region contests, now we're starting to hit where it really matters and counts towards the state playoffs. What's kind of been the message this week to kind of put those behind? We've gotten better at practice, uh, better since that first game. What's kind of been the message this week going into this huge region contest? Well, you know, it, it, every game's important, uh, but it's almost like a, I heard one of the kids say earlier this week, you know, brand new season. Uh, so, you know, uh, we, we wanted to win those two ball games, but things didn't go exactly like we planned. So, you know, uh, it's on to the next one. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I think we're focused right now on East Hall and, and starting the region out 1-0, and and hopefully week to week we can do that and just be 1-0. and How important will, and it's homecoming, a lot of things happening, how important will uh, the crowd, the student section, and all of that be for us tonight here at home? Oh, man, it's always awesome to play at home. Uh, our student section, you know, you can hear them when we come out, and uh, hopefully we'll have a big crowd here tonight and uh, get our guys juiced up and uh, do something fun, you know. Sounds like a plan. We'll toss it back to the booth as we get ready for a kickoff here live on War Eagle TV at 7.30 tonight. We come back with the uh, national anthem. We're going to send it to the band. And welcome back to the Lynn Contrell Complex. Here's your War Eagles take on East Hall. East Hall Vikings. And, it's... and that was what you just heard was the Chesity War Eagle band performing the national anthem and their fight song now. I think it's really going to be a really, really good game. It's either yeah. going to be, to me, it's either going to be really close. Or it's going to be a, a big blowout game. I hope it's not a big blowout game. I didn't really say who. I, so. Yeah. <laughs> could be us. It could be them. We don't We don't really know. And, yes, I am a senior or a classman of the East Hall Vikings. I graduated in 2001. So I am an East Hallian. So now I have a little bit of a rivalry. We have a rivalry <laughs> right here, but I'm going to stick with, with the Chesty War Eagles. So we're gonna start a fighting over the ball or fighting over the commentating. <laughs> he wants to root off for the East Hall. We gotta root off for the West uh Chesity. But as you know, Chesity's uh two and oh. Not Chesity, but um no. East Hall's two and oh. East Hall's two and oh. They beat um Johnson and West Hall. Yes. Uh, Johnson they barely they beat like they won by like five points, and West Hall they won by like one. So, well, I know the first game when Chesty took on Hebron County, it was a bad blowout game. It was also a 
like a private school. Yeah, and it was the final score was like 55 to 14. So, and then the away game, Chesity, what was the score on that one? I was at that game. It was 34 to 13. So, so we've been uh, improving. We didn't get. We got more touchdowns this, uh, last game. So we've been improving. So I hope your quarterback and your wide receiver has got some connection going on. So I hope they've been working together. Because we've been noticing over the past few uh, games that they've been overthrowing the ball. Over, yeah. They've been they've been having players wide open and they've been dropping it. Or not even dropping it, they've just been overthrowing it. Yeah, they've been overthrowing it and just not connecting to anything. I guess is the offensive line is just, it, they come, just, they, the defense just comes in and it kind of rattles the quarterback for a little bit. He just overthrows and, or underthrows him. So, that's why I say I hope our offensive line can hold up the, so the quarterback can actually do something. And that quarterback for your game is going to be Josh Kermode. He's a sophomore this year with their um, wide receivers, Christian Gerard, Tyler Humphreys, and Christian Vargas, and Edwin Rodriguez. Your um, running backs for this game are Adriel Vargas and Jason Granados. Yeah, Jason Granados, he did some good running in the last game. It was... um. I was at the um, the White County game. There was a like, what was it, a 90-something yard run by um, Adriel Vargas. Oh, okay. It was a he bus busted through right through the the middle of the line and just ran all the way through the. Uh, there you go. See, we got zone. some we got some improvement right there. Yeah, and that um, Hebron game. It was a um, they were stopping him at the line a lot. Yeah, and that quarterback there, he was more doing a Russell Wilson type. Keeper, and I guess the defense just didn't know how to stop him because he he got a couple of they got I think got two or three, 80 to 90 yards running, almost from their end zone. Yeah, it was a uh, not good de a game for the um, defense. No, but they uh, they've been stopping it at the the last game at White County. It was they stopped them pretty good. So. We got a good, still nine minutes left to still come down here and support your War Eagles. And good thing it's not going to be a. It doesn't look like it's going to rain it, so it, far. It's that fall weather is coming in, so it's starting to get cooler out here. See, so I'm going to go and stop by your Chesty Oil shop and pick up your uh, sweaters and jackets. Yeah. Because it's over the past few uh, next few weeks, it's going to get colder and colder. Yeah, we're going to be hitting that fall and winter and you know Georgia weather yeah it can be cold one next and hot the, uh, yeah give it five minutes it'll change <laughs> that's why we weren't um we were scared for the um homecoming parade that we had today it was that said it was going to rain all yesterday and we come here today and didn't even do a drop. We got uh, sunburned that's how, uh, ah. that's how sunny it was yeah <laughs> so on three or more AP exams. But um, the homecoming parade that we had today was uh, it was pretty fun. We got to uh, demonstrate what we have at our high school with the um, floats. We had an AV float. We were doing interviews and doing a newscast on the float. There you go. It was fun. Yeah. We even played uh, music from your famous movies, Back to the Future and Jurassic Park. <laughs> Star Wars was. It was pretty fun. Also, oh, okay. So, get you a DeLorean. Also, AP Capstone Diploma. I would recommend going to the uh, AV program if you're looking for something to do in the high school. It's a pretty fun experience, in my opinion. And that's just a. Uh, right now, they are showing the AP Scholars for the Chessie High School Advanced Placement Scholars. These are all these seniors that are. Getting AP Tanya scholars Vasquez. and going on to bigger and Joshua better Vick, things. AP seminar and research certificate. An AP scholar with honor is a student who has averaged As a, a score of at least Matt Sauer says, we're gonna. On all AP exams taken. This stadium is gonna get packed, so make sure you get a uh, you get here early exams. because it's gonna. Our 2022 Chester T AP. It's gonna get packed, but if you can't come to the game, 
Oh, okay. we could go to the. Uh, Abigail. You should go to the War Eagle TV. Mitchell Ryder. War Eagle TV is where you'll find this live stream. Right, if you're not watching it now, or you want to watch it later. Yeah. War Eagle TV is where it's at. We have a weekly news going on. Our 2022 Chesapeake AP Scholars with Distinction are Brayden Bennett. But on the field right now, we have a the band getting ready. Also, AP Capstone Diploma. The um. Christopher Hammond. Getting ready to also AP Run out onto the field. We have five minutes and fifty seconds. Now please give a big round of applause. The to band is is getting ready to get in their place, and they're getting ready to. Chesapeake High School is proud to recognize our AP Scholars tonight. I guess uh, we're not going to do the AP Scholars again. It's a good achievement. They get to go to a bigger and better things. <laughs> Don't you have an AP Scholar? No, you didn't get one this year. Here it is. The the band is getting ready to set up for uh, the kickoff. Or we have five minutes to kick off. So that pregame. Now the the captains. The captains are coming out. They're getting ready to come out and do the flip toss, coin toss. And your uh, captains look like it was a Christian Gerard, um, number 67, Luis Jordan, number 29, Braden Bennett, and number 42, which is Ethan Clark. All right. Now, Ethan Clark made a, a big game that uh, last Friday. Made a good plays. So did um, Gerard and everyone. So we improved a lot. Oh, yeah. They're getting the flags ready. They're waiting on the football players to come out with four minutes ready to play. But can't you believe it? It's already, That's what, week four? Almost week, yeah. It's no, it's week three. This is week three coming in. No, because we had a bye week last oh, week. Oh, that's right, that's right. I'm sorry. We had we a bye week two weeks ago. So it's actually week four of your high school. It's already four, gone by that four fast. Four weeks. It doesn't even feel like it. It only feels like one. College football has started. NFL has started. Baseball is getting ready for the, the, the World, World Series. World Series. It's a great time for sports fans, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, the tennis champions are on. Yeah. But um, last Saturday, your uh, uh, the Georgia Bulldogs oh. they had a big, big yeah. game <laughs> against Oregon. It wasn't even a technically it wasn't even a game. It was like forty-two to three. Yeah, that was Georgia are showing their national championship reign. Your Alabama showing they're coming for it this year. Ohio. Ohio had a good game against Notre Dame. That was a close game until it got took away at around the half past halftime. Yeah. And your Georgia Tech put up a good defensive game against Clemson, but came up short. So. I thought it was funny because um, someone said, why would Oregon fly all the way to uh, Atlanta just to kick a field goal? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was, <laughs> that was rough. Here comes the pump up video to get you pumped up and ready to go. Yes, to get you Finally, hyped. SEAL training, there's a bell. A brass bell that hangs in the center of the compound for all the I'm students ready. to see. All you have We're going to do stop a bit, all get all this. People the walked out, and Ring we'll be back when they all get ready no running on the field.
All you have to do is ring the bell to get out. If you want to change the world, don't ever, ever ring the bell. And here is your Chester T War Eagles. They got some fireworks going on right now. <laughs> I don't know what else gets you hype, but this does. Ooh, they nice. have the uh, U.S. theme going on. That's real. Getting ready for East Hall to bust out through the banner. And there and comes the East Hall Vikings. As we are minutes away from kickoff. We are 20 seconds away from the kickoff against Chesty War Eagles and the East Hall Vikings. This is going to be a good, intense game. I am excited. Apparently, we're Fox 5's game of the week. Oh, there we go. So that's going to bring more hype to that football team. And this is the bell. Here we go. Let's see who got the ball first. They're calling it now. So it looks like we're kicking it off. So it looks like East Hall is going to be taking the field first. Your uh, Chesity Warriors this game, they're wearing all black. Yeah. Which is a, a great combination on the field. And your yeah. East Hall has a white jersey, white pants, and a black helmet. So. And it looks like Chesity is getting the ball. East Hall is going to be kicking off. So Chesity War Eagles will be receiving first. And then the East Hall will be getting in the second half. So, kickoff is on your way. Here we go. Oh. Week four, high school football has begun. And it is a short kick to the 25 yard line. Little drop a bit. He's still going. Good five yard run right there. Here comes your War Eagle offense with your quarterback, Josh Kermode, and your running back, Adriel Vargas, and wide receivers, Tyler Humphreys, Christian Vargas, Edward Rodriguez, and Christian Gerard. And uh, your running backs, Adriel Vargas, which I probably already said that, and Josh, Jason Granados. All right, here we go. First snap. Oh, it's a fake. Little screen pass, a little off there. Second to, down already. To Elijah Pruitt. It was a little short off the little screen pass. So, I think he came up a little too short in the backfield and he was wanting him to go off. If he would have caught that, he would have been gone already. <laughs> little pregame jitters, I believe. You always gotta get those out of way in the first drive. So the ball on the 30. They're running up Little the quarterback. Middle. Up the middle for a good. Two yard, or one yard game. Brings it up third and nine. Up to the 33. It is now third down. See what the offensive coordinator calls here. Hike back. Throwing oh, good deep. pass, good pass. Oh, oh he's caught. Oh, he's caught. At the 30 yard line. It's a number. That was Christian Vargas that caught the ball. Christian Vargas from the 33. Looks like he caught it behind his shoulder. That's how good it was. 
to the first, oh, quick snap. Good run, but it looked like it didn't get nowhere on that one. Yeah, that was a behind the shoulder pass, it was that quick. Now it's going to be for a second and 11. They're going to hike the ball. 40 yard pass right there. Give it to Jason and it's kid like a maybe a one yard gain. Granado is on the carry for Chesapeake. Now it's going to be third and ten with a quick hurry up. Nope. Thought it was going to be a quick hurry up. Trying to get that call from the uh, off offensive coach. I think I'm going to throw a deep Good again. deep pass. Intercepted and in the end zone. It was a overthrown it. Yeah. Again, it's what their main problem is. And there it goes, showing again. Yeah, there's a slight interception right there. So now the defense has come out. Kind of underthrew or overthrew them on that one again. Like you said, they've been overthrowing a lot on this. Now they're going to start off at the, uh, or Esau is going to start at their 20 yard line. Number 18. What Hard a pass. Bullet pass. So number 16. That was a bullet pass for about three yards, too, maybe. Looks like a cannon of an arm. <laughs> Running it up the Running the up middle. the middle. Our defense stopped them up, but there is a flag. Let's see what the flag call is. And they're going to be bringing them back. Holding on the offense. That's going to bring them back 10 yards. So it's going to bring them back. So now it's going to be still going to be second. Second and 16. No. Second and 17. That was close. Hey, you were close. It was a good call. I mean, you're getting there. <laughs> Quarterback throws back. Little screen pass. And it's met up at the line. Nowhere. So it's probably. Yeah, that's going to bring a third down. For your War Eagle defense. The defense is showing some good stoppage right here. That's a good two yard pass right there. Hopefully, we get them You're stopped right here. Let's see if we can get another good stop right here, make it fourth down. Quarterback getting right rushed. He run out of the pocket. Is he going to throw it? Oh, he gets pushed out of bounds. Good stop by the defense. Even if he would have thrown that, that would have been way past the line of scrimmage. Knocked out of bounds by number 74, Brandon Carlson. Good hit right there. So now it's fourth and 15. So it's going to be a punt. So our defense has actually stepped up this time. I feel like even if he would have thrown that ball, it would have been over the line. It would have yeah. been way past the line of scrimmage. Because he was way out of the pocket and nobody really in the area. Oh! Another flag. It looks like a false start on the defense. It's going to move them up five yards. So now it's going to be fourth and 11. Or offside, sorry. Here comes the punt. Bust through the line. And get, get Short some. punt. Down to, looks almost to the 50. 
about the 40, 40 you say, eight yard line? That was a kind of sh short punt. That was a <laughs> short punt, but good defense stoppage right there, though. Now we have uh, half the field to go to now. Other than starting at the 20 yard line. Yeah. Hopefully the quarterback right here will not overthrow. Get his passes right on target this time, hopefully. As he gets ready to hike now. Here comes a run. Oh, he slipped through. Got a good three or four yards pickup on that one. He slipped through like three defenders on that one. Really good for, uh, for Adriel Vargas. Quick run. Oh, it was a right quarterback sneak. Pocket. Hopkins with a good first down run. Got a good nine yards on that one. The way he looks, he looks like a Mariota. <laughs> yeah. With that number eight on his jersey. Come right oh, third and one. 31, little swift pass. I don't think he got the yard in on that one. And might have got taken back. So it's going to be like fourth and two, fourth and three. And they're going to stay on the field. They are not going for the punt. I wouldn't punt either. It's too far. <laughs> oh, the oh, it's a quarterback punt. punt. Is he going to get it down gonna, to the... He stops him at the one. Stop right on the line. On the... It hits him just on the line. It didn't even go over. It didn't. Oh, it did go over the line. They're bringing it back as a touchback. That was a really, really close call. Oh, yeah. You know, that's what they were expecting. So that's going to be uh, your second drive for uh, East Hall. See if they can get off of that 20-yard line here. They didn't get much, and they went backwards, actually. Oh, he's going to be bombing it long. Oh, oh he catches it. And he still goes. 50, 40, 30, 30, 30, 20, 10. Got down it down at, at the, the five. five. Wow. That was a 95, or a 75 yard pass. 75 yard pass. That was a good pass by the number 18. That's going to make it. First and goal on the three yard line. They're gonna go with the run and he, and he gets through. it. That's your uh, touchdown by East Hall. By number uh, seven, or uh, by the running back. Set it up for the field goal now. Oh, oh, almost blocked, but it is good. Now that touchdown was a, it was getting tipped, so I didn't know how that was, how he even caught that ball, because he bounced it up a couple times. Yeah, because the, def the, the defender looked like he was just letting go because he thought he dropped it. That's why he kind of shortened it up a little bit and just let him go. And then he's like, oh, he's still going. So that was a little mishap from the defense there. Now it's a 7.20 left in the first quarter. As your War Eagles will get it back for the third time.
So it was a little defensive stoppage the first round. So they stopped the East, East Hall. And then the second time they came around with a 75 yard pass. And then ran it in for a touchdown. So we're going to see how the. Uh, it's like a little lead kick. Swift kick. It's going to be at the 39 yard line. That was a, almost an onside kick almost. Tried it. That's what it might as well be. Yeah, that wasn't a good kick at all. A lot of kicks is a. Uh this season have mostly been odd side kicks. Yeah. Trying to get that ball back early. Other than facing the uh, offense again. Yeah. So let's see if we, the, we can come back with some little screen pass to number seven, Christian Gerard. There's a flag on the field. Which I think it would be called holding. It's kind of I don't know if it's going to be on the offense, on the defense. It's going to be holding on the offense. So it's going to knock them back five yards. Now it's going to be on the 31. First and 15. Is it What? It'll be first and 20 for Chesapeake. Okay, do you see my yeah. run? Oh, he's still going. Oh, he's through. Good run. Look like he got his yards back on that one. Now it's a second down. Oh, there's a flag on the field again. No, another flag on the field. Let's see what they call it this time. Illegal shift on the offensive again. So now it's going to be first in a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's. I think it's like. Not the drive you're you got to be expecting. Two flat. Oh, oh, almost an offside right there from the defense. Yeah, now it's going to be first and 24. First, yeah. First and light. Look good in the little oh, quarterback sneak. Josh Kermode kept it for a good. For about a. So we got some of the yardage back on that one. Got like five or six yards. So now it's going to be second and 18. About six, yeah, six yards. I think I'll give it to their running back now. No, it's going to be another quarterback. Keep. And I don't think he got anything on that one. Got a good two yards maybe off of that one. That's third down. Third down. And third and 15. So hopefully they'll get something going right here. Do another deep pass again. Do a little, a little screen pass, pass, but the defense saw him. On that extra point, he said he, um, it actually he missed it. So actually six nothing. Oh, okay. Wow. So he was almost blocked. Yeah, and that's what made it six nothing, not seven. Ooh. Good punt right there. Good Gonna punt, take good a roll. Where you go bounce. Down to the the 32 yard. Well, or 28 yard, I'm sorry. So see who, see if we can stop this East Hall offense again, like we did the first time. 
Here's the snap. Runs, Runs up. Out. Oh, he and gets, he gets sacked. sacked by no Elijah Pruitt. That offensive line didn't stand him a chance. He just busted oh. right through them. That was a good stop. Yeah, now it's second and 22 for the uh, East Hall. 12 yard sack. Yeah, Elijah Pruitt just saw the opportunity and just busted through that offensive line. Like it's going to be a run with number seven. Only got maybe a yard or two. So it's got to be third down again. With less than five minutes to play in this first quarter. Wow, this first quarter is going by quick. Here comes the... Snap. Look, it's going to be a screen pass. Another little short pass. And he's he still going. going. And that's going to be short from what it looks like. Start at the 15. And they're going to stay on the field where it's going to be a fourth and two or a fourth and one. A really long one. They're getting ready to try and draw them off sides, I guess. It's going to be fourth and one. I personally wouldn't do this if it's close on my end zone. Oh, it's going to be a quarterback keep. No, he throws it and, and it's, it's incomplete. Dropped. So that gives them a great advantage at the 40, at the 32. 32 yard line. No. At the. 38 yard line. That's where Chesity is. 37. What a great opportunity for the War Eagles now. Yeah. Hopefully, we can get this offense, this offense started. We'll see if Chesity can get something going. And start out running out the pocket. Run out the Crow's pocket. Oh, he it. keeps going! A good seven yard run right there. And there's that Marcus Maria type quarterback. He always wanted to run out the pocket, but can throw when needed to. Yeah. See if we can keep, keep this momentum going. It's gonna make it second and two. Quarterback cuts. A little small pass, uh, overthrew it on that one. I don't know who he was going on on that one. Yeah, I was kind of confused there. It looks like he just tried to find someone, but he couldn't find his re receiver, so he just <laughs> threw it down the middle. Yeah. Make it a third and two now. Getting their place by their offensive coordinator. And make a big run. Oh, he's got the first down on that one. And that's going to be a first down for the War Eagles at the 25 yard line. Adele Vargas got that first down on that one. Looks like he tried to jump his way through. Yeah, that. he had to. He's like, I'm determined to get this first down, keep this momentum going. Now at the 25-yard line. Oh, he passes good it pass. deep. And it's oh, it right on touchdown. target. Josh Kermode right on target. 25-yard touchdown. That's what you love to see by number one, Christian Vargas. Yeah. And that thought was perfect. Oh, that was a perfect throw on that one. There's basically nowhere else where you could have put that thing. Yeah. He knew he out. He beat that that cornerback. He basically did the uh, Randy Boss. Yeah. He jumped over him. 
That was an over the shoulder catch right there. See if we can hit this field goal, and we are actually. And we are taking the lead. Taking the lead. Seven to six. Seven to six. And that is the first lead that we had over this whole season so far. We've got a game going on right here. And that's what's going to make you believe it's going to come down to the last few minutes. Oh, yeah. It's going in on like a Hail Mary or something. Yep. I think it caught the East Hall defense off guard a little bit. Because they're be probably used to that promote running the ball now. Yeah. I'm going to trick them up. And as uh, Conley said on his interview, East Hall is young, known for their speed yeah. on this team. And that's what, they pr that's what they've proven with that touchdown. But looks like they're, they slowed up just a tiny bit on that one. So now they're kicking the ball off right now. They got momentum going right now. They're hyped up. Now see if we can a deep right. kick all the way down to the 15. But it that's like going to bring a flag because it was out of bounds at the kickoff. Yeah. So just with two minutes and 45 seconds in the first quarter, Chesty is up by 1.7 to 6. I guess it's East Hall Vikings. Now usually with a 2-0 team, you expect them to just dominate. <laughs> but that's not what's happening with uh with uh Chesity's defense now. No. They're starting on the ball on the 35 yard line since that out of bounds kick. Looks like it's gonna be a run up the middle and nothing. I don't even think he got a yard on that one. It looks like he got a couple inches. Yeah, no yards on that one. Man in motion. Coming Bullet up. pass again. A little screen pass. Only looks like I got maybe two yards on that one. Looks like he slipped up yeah. around there. This quarterback number 18 has just got he looks like almost a Peyton Manning type throw. He's like a bullet. <laughs> it's like he, wants, he wants to make sure he gets the ball yeah. out. Quarterbacks and he overthrows. Overthrows this one, making it fourth and nine. Three and out right there. So So that was a good stoppage on that defense right there. Almost blocked hunted. it. Good catch right there. Fair catch down to the 37 yard line right there. See if this momentum of this of this Chesity offense can continue what they did last drive. Yeah, here we go with the run. No quarterback keep again. Has him confused. That's a good 11-yard run right there. He's even got the cameraman upstairs confused. That's how good it was. Yeah. Quarterback keep again. 
Ooh, Ooh, got hit out of bounds. Where's the flag on that one? There's that flag coming in. That's gonna. That's gonna cost East Hall right there. It looks like someone. Wait, hit him. It looks like someone might get ejected soon. Hope it's not a. Oh, it looks like they uh, took the flag away. Good four yard run right there. Now he gets it to the running back. Now there Vargas you go. gets the run. Good He's running got all down the, the field. momentum. Almost hit one of the cameramen on the sideline. <laughs> Good 15 yard run right there. Almost hit our cameraman, Peyton. Getting all the highlights for this game. The good little screen pass, number seven. Ooh, get stopped. That number uh, 11 broke through that defense. He had his eyes set on that uh, screen pass. Yeah. Now with less than a, uh, a minute in this first quarter, we're gonna see what this Chess City offense can do. Looking over to that quarter, uh, coordinator. There was another pass. deep oh, pass. Oh, dude, man, right down the middle. A good, another 15-yard pass. That was a perfect pass, too. They definitely got those jitters out now. Oh, yeah, they're, they're pumped and they're ready to go. They're wanting another touchdown. It's confusing this East Hall defense right now. Out of the pocket, out. little slight pass. Good stop, good Another. stop, gets running room, good running room. Look like he's got a touchdown! touchdown. Woo Christian Gerard with that one. Wow. He's make it 14 to six. He did not want to stop until he got to that end zone. No. And they took all that uh, motivation from uh, East Hall. We got all of it now. Yeah. This is your where you go football, but it looks like someone from East Hall has got hurt. So we're going to take a break. We're back to you after this. All right, and we're back. Looks like the um, East Hall player just got shooken up. They're going to send out a replacement for him. And it looks like they're about to do a two point, but that's. They'll shift over, get them lined up. Kick is up, and, and kick is good. Now it's going to be 14-6. And we're going to... With 7.4 seconds left in the first quarter. So we're going to take a break, and we'll be back to you when they get to the, the kickoff. also like to recognize some of our sponsors for tonight's game, Johnny's Barbecue. Free Chapel, Reach Boat Lift and Dock Services, Whitetail Mafia, Siphon Logistics, Go Reliable Home Service, and Hall County FCA. Back with the, uh, the kick. 
we'll see what we do now. Lost all the momentum. I think this drive will break for the rest of the game. Oh, good. good. All the way down into the end. Touchback on that one. That was now, as I said before, I think this um, this drive will basically be the make or break for this uh, offense. Yeah. Let's see if the East Hawk has an answer or, is it, or the defense can actually, or the, if the defense can stop them again. They might take it to the second quarter after this play. There was another bullet pass. Bullet pass, pass for about a about two yards. That's going to be the end of the first quarter. All right, and we're going to go see about these other games that are going on around the uh, the county. We have um, Blessed Trinity zero at against Saint. Plus. Winning three to zero against the Gainesville Red Elephants. Cherokee Bluff is winning seven zero against Madison County. And North Hall is facing Walnut Grove for this uh, for, for uh, the night this night's matchups. So, there's a lot of good games going on this week. And usually East Hall right now, or not sorry, East Hall, but Gainesville, they're usually pretty dominant. And for them to be 3-0, and or, or, yeah, if the score is 3-0. Yeah, hey, North Hall hasn't really been this good uh, this past year. I mean, they've, their first game losing to White County in the rain to their second game, losing to um, second. to their second game, losing to Dawson County, 30 to 13. Gonna be a quarterback keep for number 18, and look like you only got maybe two yards on that one. Bringing up third down. So we also have a uh, college football tonight. <laughs> uh oh, yeah, USC is facing off Louisville, and that's seven to seven right now in the first. He's tall height that goes out of the pocket. Look, he's going to be going, dude, right down the middle. But what a catch! He got hit, and he still caught it for a good. 20 yard pass right there. That will make it a first and 10 at the 25. No, it's the uh, 45. 45, sorry about that. You're good. Another little bullet pass and it just, <laughs> he is too just hard. Bombing him things in, wide receivers are like, they can't just grab it. He's throwing them too hard. <laughs> he wants to get out before this defense goes and swallows him. Yeah. Bringing up second and 10. But the band going all off. Now with the hike. Another little screen pass. And that defense saw it. Good 10 yard run right there, or 10 yard pass. It's gonna make it another first down. This has kind of been a offensive battle, uh, battle in this first half. A lot of big, deep plays. A lot of 
quarterback big runs. Quarterback run or to the running back and looks like he lost a yard on that one. Oh, the line of scrimmage. I'm sorry. So that's gonna move him back. It's gonna be second and eleven. At the 26. And the number 21. Oh, 20. Rush. Oh, that's yeah. a fumble. No, it's a. His arm was going forward. Looked like it was hit though. The number 21. Hector. Whoa. All right, I'd love to see another uh, tuck rule. <laughs> that would have been an interesting call to see in her. Cause that almost, High school football. That almost looked like a fumble right there, but he was coming down with the forward pass. That's a third and 11. They're gonna oh, a little fake. Do the screen pass again, but screen. everyone stopped. Very good. It's gonna make it fourth down now. And bring out that punt team. Are they going to go for it? And it looks like they're going to bring out the punt team. And they're going to use a timeout. And we're going to take a timeout as well. And we'll be with you back in just one moment. Brought to you by Hollis Logistics and Domingo's Construction. And we're back. It's going to be fourth and seven. And they're going to be punting the ball. So it was a good Chester D stop from the defense right there. Here with a punt. Oh, almost, blocked almost blocked again. again. All the way down and they're to gonna, the... That was a 14-yard line. Yeah. Well, that was a great punt by uh, East Hall. So there was a big run for uh, their Chastity off offense. It was it Jason Granados that got that run? And that's going to bring out a second down and three. We got that hurry up offense again. We're going to. The screen pass to number seven. Oh, got the first down and he's going. Oh, a little stoppage. Still going right there. Ooh, good. Down at the 40 yard line. Close to the 40. Good run or good pass right there. Yes. First down. It looks like the uh, defense got their stuff back together, but. The offense is really proving their dominance now. The offense is actually kicking it up right here. Looked like he was going to do a quarterback. No, he pump faked it. Was going to go run for it, but got stopped. That's not really a sack, then. It'd be like quarterback run. No yards. 
The loss of one on that one. Gonna be second eleven now. Looking at that offensive corner, Jake Conley. That's been giving him all the plays. There's a snap. snap. Run to number five. Almost intercepted. That pass was attended to uh, Elijah Pruitt, the senior. The defensive got their got their hands on it. It was almost intercepted again. That would have been their second interception, but it slipped right through his fingers. Like a lot of passes that have been going on today. Yeah. So third and 11. But no pass can do it. Be to do as a big as Christian Vargas is. Oh, kind of overthrew him on that one. Looked like a... Well, the, that defensive um, corner like flew through there, so that probably disrupted him. And they're going to bring out the... Uh, punt team now. So the East Hall stopped them on that one. Yeah, we had their our fair share of stops and they have their fair share of stops. So it's still a pretty even game. Good, a good punt. Make Down. a chest city bounce again. And he's going to catch it. He's going to try and catch a run with it. He, uh, he waited for a fair catch. He shouldn't have run. He felt like he could have got it, I guess. With around five people going around him. Yeah, but he called for the fair catch. That's why nobody was going to touch him. That reminds me of that one play with the, um, it was like North Texas and Air, um, Arkansas, where he did a fake fair catch. Yeah. And he just stood there for a second and then just ran. I guess that's what he tried to do there. Uh, yeah. But um, they I guess they're too they're too smart for that. Seven thirty one left in the second quarter. Ball in the twenty seven. First and ten for East Hall. Like it's going to be a, a quick pass. Quick pass. Ooh, Ooh. good <laughs> stop. Did the clothesline. <laughs> yeah. Uh oh. Looks like he hurt himself a little bit. Brushing Hold, that off. He's holding his, number 15 is holding his arm. That was a good nine yard pass right there. I think he was brushing that off though. It wasn't that bad. Another quick pass. Ooh, almost got, almost got open, but that defense stopped him there. Yeah. But that's going to bring up another first down for East Hall. With the clock running, will East Hall... Will they score any points at the end of the half? or We'll see what happens here, I guess. With that first down coming up. Another, oh, oh fake. Oh, he kind of over. He didn't even, he threw it too short. It was a short pass on that one. Intended for number three. The defense is really getting to him now. Yeah. If we can get that another set going, we'll get this, this stoppage here. 2nd and 10. Here comes... Oh, oh, oh I thought he was going to... I thought that? it was another qu uh, quarterback run. It Obviously got me confused stopped. on that one. Because <laughs> it looked like number 21 was going to hit him again. But the running back did not get but maybe a yard. That's going to make it another third down. <laughs> Let's see if our Chesty War Eagles can stop them here. There's the height, runs out of the pocket. Where is it? Throws a dart, but is he inbound? No, he was out wow. of bounds. That was a good catch. But ends up his 
two feet were not inbounds. Or in high school, it's one. Yeah. And you get to fit either feet in inbounds. Yeah. That was a good throw and a good catch on that one. But just comes up a few inches short. Yeah. So they're going to bring out that punt team. And um, Christian Girard is going to be out back receiving. So far, this has been almost a kind of a defensive kind of game. And it looks like there's a, um, a timeout. And we're going to take another timeout. We'll be back with you in just a minute. Scores from and around, around the area at City Park. It's all tied up in the second quarter, three to three. Gainesville and Clark Central. And late in the second quarter, it's Walnut Grove, 21, North Hall, seven. In the second quarter, Banks County, 21, Franklin County, three. And in the second quarter... All right, and that's going to leave East Hall with one touchdown, or one, not one touchdown, one, one, um, yeah, one touchdown. One timeout left. Oh, one timeout, yeah. That's going to leave Esau with one timeout. We still have all three of ours with five minutes to go. Oh, good punt. Fair catch down at the 25-yard line. Or the 24 or 26, sorry. I'll get it right here in a second. It's going to be it's first. getting confusing when you look at the uh, lines from up here. Yeah. So a good Chastity defense stop on the East Hall right there. As we said before, it's been a really good defensive game. We've been yeah. going back and forth and back and forth. It's whoever makes the big plays is going to be in the lead then. That's what it turns out to be. Turning right. out to be. Let's see if Chastity can get something going again here. A little quarterback run up the middle for a good maybe three yards. And just a reminder, on the at halftime, they're going to announce the homecoming kings and queens. Ah. So we're really Who, excited. Who's your vote for this year? My bro vote, probably for the for the guys, it'd probably be Christian Gerard. Uh -huh. the, uh, the queen? My vote for the, for the seniors? Yeah. Probably Brooke Benna. Almost intercept. Oh, he hit, he hit the... Defense on that one on the shoulder blade. Yeah, she's been a uh, really convincing everyone to vote for her. So, ah, uh, okay. That's kind of why. That's a good defensive play right there. That's gonna bring a third down now. You got the call for the offensive coordinator. Mr. Man in, Conley. Man in motion. Here we go. A little screen a pass to the... Pass. Oh, oh, he <laughs> kind of baffles it. And that pass was bobbled three or four times. Yeah, hit his helmet. So now it's going to bring fourth. And they're going to punt it once again. Told you this is like a defensive game in the second quarter. Good thing it's done to the... Uh, Iowa game. Game only ended like was it seven to three? They didn't even score a touchdown there. Almost blocked again. But good kick all the way down to the whew, like 18. 18. Wow, that was a good punt. A block I mean almost a block to an eight uh big punt. Yeah, at your 29-yard line with less than five minutes to go in this half. Let's see what your, or see what the East Hall can do with this opportunity, or see what your defense can do with this. With the War Eagle defense. The War Eagle defense, right here. They've they got to be pretty tired. Seems like everybody's going back and forth. 
And you have some pretty big stops so far. Oh, yeah. And they come up with a big interception or fumble. Oh, like, oh, a little screen pass. He hit the quarterback, but. It's going to be a big run there. Down to the 45, 44. Good 25-yard pass right there. And that's going to make it another first down for East Hall. It looks like, oh, although they switched quarterbacks. It but. still looks like number 18. And we couldn't find the uh, the rosters online anywhere, so that's why we couldn't name any of the uh, oh, East Hall like players. Deep again, almost in between two defenders right there. Yeah, so sorry for that uh, inconvenience because we can't find any of the uh, East Hall rosters online. We looked everywhere. Some of the rosters are hard to find, I guess. So now it's going to be... He was trying to thread the needle with that pass right there between two defenders. <laughs> that was something uh, That's like almost, not many people can make. It's almost like I'm trying to be a Baker Mayfield right there. Oh yeah, that play was cool. Dude, right down the middle. Dude, That's wide open good. and down to the 10-5 touchdown. East Hall. That was an open pass right down the middle. It was like a 56-yard a pass. And that's going to make it 60. 13 to 14. We got a one-point game going to the four minutes to go in the second quarter if they make this field goal. That was a – man, would they just – looks like they look – I don't know if they're going to be going for... They might be going for two. two. They want to tie this game before halftime. They're going to try to tie it up. Ready for the hike. Oh, and it blocked. Is blocked. So now it's a two-point game. 12-14. to 14. Your Warriors still win in this thing. Now we're having a game. Yeah. With four minutes and 14 seconds to go, the defense... Gave up a 65-yard pass for a touchdown. But it looks like the defense stopped the two-point conversion. So, yes, now it's 12 to 14 with less than, what was it, 430 left to play? 414. All right. So this is actually a good football game going on here. Our Chesities are... I guess that's why it's Fox 5's game of the week. They're putting up a defensive and offensive game. And if you look on the uh, sidelines over there, we got the, the representatives walking out with their uh, families. The homecoming king and queen court. They're going to announce all the freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors tonight. Little buff kick down to the 30. And he's going to take it. Oh, that was a hit. That was a hit from the back, back too. London Johnson took that ball. He got nailed. He's going to feel that one in the morning. <laughs> Now it's first and ten at the thirty-six. And hopefully your War Eagles can make something big happen before halftime. There's the hike. Don't know head don't have anybody. Lucky's going oh nope. A little confusing. He's run it out. It's gonna run it out of bounds. At four minutes left to go. Don't look like he got anything off of that one. Loss of two on that one. Not only did he gain anything, he lost two yards. That's not that's how the, you want to start your uh, drive. Not the direction you want to go. Well, that's going to make it second and 12. Man in motion. He's going to pass it right pass, to him. Pass it to the man in motion like he slipped a little bit. And that was Elijah Pruitt. 
Back with his uh, redemption catch. Yeah. Look, he got that two yards, well, four yards on that one. Well, there's not really been that much slipping now since it's hasn't been raining much. No. I guess it's all because the artificial Runs out of the grass. Pocket, throws it. Oh, tripped up. And That's got to be a pass interference. No flag. There's the flag. That's got to be pass interference on the defense. He like ran he's... right into him. But it's on the offense. Are they going to accept it or deny it? And it's against Chesty bringing him back. <laughs> and the, it's got, that penalty is going to be declined. And that's going to make it fourth, fourth and nine. nine. Yeah. And yep, they're going to bring out that pull, punt team. Bring out the punt team. <sighs> A big play. Plover and get the first down again. Turns out to be another punt for the War Eagles. With 3.25 left to go. The punt's almost blocked again. Almost hit the player in the back down at the 30-yard line. A 29. 316 remaining in this first or the second quarter, I'm sorry. With a score, Chesty 14, Vikings 12. Hopefully this defense can not let them get another good pass in the right in the middle again. Yeah, that was uh lost all the momentum for the Warriors. Well not all of it. Most of it. Some If it's but now, around your, uh, the county, Gainesville is actually oh. tied with uh, Clark Central. Three all? Mm-hmm. Um, Looks like it's going to be a... North Hall is actually losing to Walnut Grove, 14-0. to Wow, that's, that's shocking right there. And um, we haven't had much updates from Cherokee Bluff, but they're winning 7-0 to so far and still in the the first quarter as it says on here but we'll keep you updated by the end of the night how that game's going to go so it looks like there was a f but in there this was a game, flag on the defense I don't know if it was holding face mask against chastity wow that's going to make it like a first and two <laughs> yeah a first and one the they haven't moved the marker, so. Looks like they haven't. Time's clicking. Down less than three minutes left to play. No, it's the, it's, yeah, it's the first and one. Man in motion. Oh, delay of game on the East Hall. That is not so good for the for East Hall. That's going to make it a first and six now. They're going to go pushing back. Actually, no. they're not. I guess it was a false missing, flag. Yeah, <laughs> false flag on that one. So now with the clock still running, second and one. Man in motion. And they're going to leave him wide open. Oh. And it's a, he makes the catch around the 40, 48, 47. Good 10-yard pass right there. All these short, all these catches are behind the shoulder, it looks like. He did. He said, yeah. yeah. It's going to be another. Well, the clock still going. First and ten. And it looks like he's going to throw it deep. And gets stopped oh, right gets stopped. at the line. 
by number 10, Ben Plemons, the freshman. Wow, that was a good stop right there. Gonna be second and eight now. Gonna go roll, roll back. Short pass. And get stopped right at stopped again. With a looks like a yard gain. With 120 left to play in the second quarter. And they're going to call a timeout, which leaves them with two timeouts left in Just this first half. And we're going to take a timeout. And we'll be back to you in just a minute. and lift and dock services. Whitetail Mafia and Siphon Logistics. Jim Short And we're back with 122 left to play. It's third and eight, as Chesapeake just took their first time out of this half. And they're gonna pass it deep, deep, and it's out of bounds. And it's third down now. All these passes are getting close, and they're almost around the same spot. He just. Can't keep his speed inbounds. That's going to bring a fourth down now. I bet that Ches uh, Sean Conley is really happy they took that timeout. Yeah. Now they have 115 left to score another touchdown. Fourth and eight, and they're punting it with a minute and 15 to go. But Chess City still has two timeouts, so I don't know if they're taking it to the half or they want to score more points. We'll try to get them the. Pop off guard, almost oh, blocked. Oh, oh, but they hit the punt, and it's a flag. Oh, he that hit was a the punter in that play. That is not what you should be expecting. And that's going to probably make it an automatic first down for East Hall. <laughs> yeah. Because they've been running through that line all day. Looks like they just left them over there just on on purpose just to make the flag. Yep, there's going to be a rough in the kicker. Mm. And that's going to make it a whole nother first down. To the 15 yard penalty. Rough in the kicker. Yeah, it's going to be a 15 yard penalty. And they have to get that whole punt team off now. Because now they're going to make, they're putting in them on the 36 yard line with a minute left. Hopefully we can come with an uh, interception or a fumble at least. Or at the least, a stop or a sack. We got five wide receivers out, and it's oh, you get sacked. I just called that. It was a sack by number twenty-two, Brian Zalegro. Hope I didn't butcher that name. Or uh, Reese Jordan, the uh, the sophomore. With forty-five seconds left. It looks like they're just going to take their time. They're just going to let the time run out now so they won't give Chess. I don't know if they're going to. They might go for Hail Mary here. Ready to Second hike the ball. 14. 
throw a quick pass and Almost it gets stopped. intercepted by he number three, Zachary's Zach or sorry, Zarius Birch. That was a almost good catch right there. It looks like an East Hall Viking player is hurt. That's what he's been wanting, Zarius Birch. He's been wanting to hit them, <laughs> the players. Because like he, he's known for he's known for wanting all the attention. Yeah. Look, well, like he got a good win knocked out of him on that one play. And uh, he saw player number 11 got up. He was shaking up, up, but he was good. Now let's go uh, finish this first half. <laughs> with two points at least ahead of him with 23 seconds. I don't know if East Hall's going to go for a knee or go for a Hail Mary. What do you think they'll probably do? I would think they probably get it. Try to do a Hail Mary. Or they're, they'll probably wait till halftime. Yeah. They'll probably wait till the second half, not risking it for the pick six. But I think Chesity, like Chesity has done before. In the second half, though, Chesity gets the ball back. Yeah, that's why it makes me think they want to go for the Hail Mary. Uh. Oh, I should have been holding. Almost intercepted again. He been look, he's looking for that and flag now. there's a flag. Now. And he's getting it. Is it going to be holding on defense again? Or pass interference maybe? Yeah, that's what I mean. Sorry. It's going to make it another first down. First down. All the first downs on this play or on this drive are all has been coming from flags. Yeah. Oh, sorry. And it looks like they're moving him up. Five, two, 15 yards to the 25 yard line. It's going to be first. With 17 seconds left, so they right now they could win, uh, take a field goal, and t at least go up by one point. But it looks like they're going to go for it because now it's first and ten. Looks like he's going to try to shoot for the end zone. Throws it deep, almost and intercepted it's, oh. again. Number three, number Zarius Birch almost came up with that interception. Oh, he's wanting that interception tonight. He is determined to get one. That's the second time he's called this name just on this drive alone. Yeah. And it's his senior year, so he wants to make the most of it, I guess. Yeah. He's wanting that interception. And it looks like they're going to go for it again with 11.7 seconds. They're going for it. He's right out of the pocket. Throws it out. He's going for that outside corner. And that is out again. That's going to be third down. And reminder on halftime, they're going to do the homecoming king and queen. They're going to crown the king, king and queen, the seniors and the winners for each uh, grade. For the freshmen, sophomore, junior, and seniors. Yeah, so let's... We can see how that's going to go during halftime. Let's but right if, now we have to see if go Chester, through this. See if Chester can hold him up. Third Runs out of the pocket. He's going for it and just throws it out. With two seconds left, it's going to be fourth and ten. I think now they're going to go for the field goal. Three Maybe. seconds left. Are they going to try to attempt it to be up by one? No, it looks like they're going to go for it. Wow. Taking a big risk. It might be coming, it might come with a big reward. We'll see. Here it comes. Two seconds left. Running out the pocket, throwing it deep. Intercept and intercepted. It's intercepted. Intercepted. Interception. Zarius burst with that interception. God, he was, I told you he was determined to get that interception. Nice, all excited before we head to that halftime. All of that momentum was on the, uh, the War Eagles. Wow. 
So now Chess City is going to go into halftime winning two point, winning by two points. Vikings 12, War Eagles 14. And this is like, if you're wanting to find any game on this week, this is the game for you. <laughs> he got that intercept. I told you he was wanting that interception. And he was probably going, he's like, I'm determined to get that interception right at the end of the game. So and that's what he got. That was a great, great defensive stoppage right here, right before halftime. So, all right. So right now, the um, it looks like the the rep, uh, the band's going to come out. And we're going to see how they're going to perform. I'm thinking that, that after that band, we're going to announce the uh, winners for uh, the homecoming. All right. So we'll take a break over this halftime, and we'll come back to you after this after this half. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Chesapeake High School's 2022 Homecoming Halftime Show. At this time, we'd like to welcome back alumni and former staff who are in the stands tonight. The 2022 Homecoming Court representatives are waiting to be introduced, but before we get to those introductions, we'd like to welcome back the 2021 Homecoming Queen, Miss Sky Barnett, and the 2021 Homecoming King, Mr. Daniel Rouse. After this year's court is introduced, Sky will crown the 2022 Homecoming Queen, and Daniel will crown the 2022 Homecoming King. And now to introduce the 2022 Homecoming Court. First representative is fresh, freshman representative, Adeline Romero Gomez. Adeline is being escorted by her brother, Alex Romero. She's the daughter of Maria Gomez and Mario Romero. She's a member of race and student council, and she plays volleyball for the Lady War Eagles. During her free time, she likes to read and write, and she spends time with family. After graduation, she hopes to pursue a career in the healthcare field and to one day write a novel. Freshman representative, Adeline Romero Gomez.
Our next freshman representative is Darlene Simmental. Darlene's being escorted by her brother, David Diaz. She's the daughter of Maria Simmental. She's a member of the LWE soccer team and the War Eagle TV and Film Club. She volunteers in her local church group and at a homeless shelter. In her free time, she enjoys playing soccer and spending time with her friends and family. After graduation, she looks forward to attending college to earn a degree in business with the goal of becoming an entrepreneur. Freshman representative, Darlene Simmental. Our next representative is sophomore representative, Addison Boyd. Addison's being escorted by her father, Tim, and she is the daughter of Janelle and Tim Boyd. She's a member of the FCA and the National Honor Society. She plays basketball for the LWE and runs track. She attends church at Lakewood Baptist, and in her free time, she enjoys spending time playing basketball and time with friends and family. After graduation, she plans to attend UGA to pursue a career in the medical field. Sophomore representative, Addison Boyd. Our next representative is sophomore representative, Maddie Conley. Maddie's being escorted tonight by her grandfather, Sean Conley. She's the daughter of Sierra and Jake Conley, and she's a member of the varsity sideline cheerleaders and is a volleyball manager. She also competes in all-star cheer at ATA. In her free time, she enjoys shopping, swimming, and spending time with family. After graduation, she plans to attend college to pursue a career in sports medicine to become an athletic trainer. Sophomore representative, Maddie Conley. Our next sophomore representative is Lola Harris. Lola's being escorted this evening by her father, Bud, and she is the daughter of Amanda and Bud Harris. She's a member of the HOSA, RACE, and the CHS Marching Band, along with the Student Council. She enjoys volunteering at Chesity with her various school activities, and in her free time, she enjoys spending time with her family, her dogs, Nero and Honey, swimming and napping. After graduation, she plans to attend Duke University, become a trauma surgeon. She, spends a big, she sends a big shout out to her friends in the marching band and the student section for their support. Representative Miss Lola Harris. Our next representative is junior representative Victoria Escamilla. Victoria is being escorted by her father, Jose Luis Escamilla, and is the daughter of Maria and Jose Luis Escamilla. She's a member of the marching band, the book club, student council, and hope. She's also the band's social chair. She enjoys volunteering at her church and at school events. And in her free time, she enjoys baking for her small business, cooking, and spending time with family and friends. After graduation, she plans to attend college to pursue a career in culinary arts. Representative Victoria Escamilla. Our next representative is junior representative Nadia Flores. Nadia is being escorted by her mother, Carmen Nicholas. She's the daughter of Carmen Nicholas and David Flores and is a member of the Chesity War Eagle Marching Band as a clarinet section leader, the National Honor Society, and the Student Council. In her free time, she enjoys volunteering with the elderly, with animals at animal shelters and babysitting. She also enjoys shopping, reading, and spending time with her friends. After graduation, she plans to attend college to study psychology. She wants to give a huge shout out to her friends, Stephanie Marquis and Yuli Mia for their support. Miss Nadia Flores. Our next representative is junior representative Yasmin Ortiz Garcia. Yasmin is being escorted by her father, Jose Luis Ortiz, and is the daughter of Irene Garcia and Jose Luis Ortiz. 
She's a member of the varsity football and basketball cheerleading teams and the student council. In her free time, she enjoys serving others at her church, babysitting, and spending time with her friends, Caitlin and Brianna. After graduation, she plans to attend Brunel University to become a travel nurse. Repre Junior Representative Yasmin Ortiz Garcia. Our next representative is Junior Representative Sierra Yarbrough. Sierra is being escorted by her father, Jonathan, and is the daughter of Leisha and Jonathan Yarbrough. She's a member of both the LWE varsity basketball and softball teams and the football sideline cheer team. She's a member of the Lakewood Baptist Church and helps run children's basketball and softball camps. She enjoys spending time with family and friends and after graduation, plans to attend Ole Miss to pursue a degree in early childhood education. Junior Representative Sierra Yarbrough. Our next representative is Senior Representative Brooke Benna. Brooke is being escorted by her father, Michael, and is the daughter of Julian Michael Benna. She's a member of the CHS track team and a cheerleader for both competition and football cheer. She interns at the hospital for work-based learning and in her free time, she enjoys spending time with her family and friends, fishing and hunting, or just being outdoors. After graduation, she plans to attend college for athletic training and sports medicine, and she plans to become a trauma surgeon. Senior Representative Brooke Benna. Our next representative is Senior Representative Christian Gerard. Christian is being escorted this evening by his mother, Lisa, and is the son of Lisa and Mark Gerard. He's a member of both the War Eagle football team and baseball team, and in his free time, enjoys spending time with his family and friends. After graduation, he plans to attend college at Kennesaw State. Senior Representative, Mr. Christian Gerard. Our next, our next representative, senior representative, Ruth Cardiel. Ruth's being escorted by her father, Domingo Cardiel, and is the daughter of Paloma Gomez and Domingo Cardiel. She's the president of the National Spanish Honor Society, and in her free time, she attends church, volunteers, cleaning streams, and at the homeless shelter also at the Humane Society, and she also enjoys babysitting and hanging out with loved ones. After graduation, she plans to work in the police force and to attend Emory University to pursue a career as a criminal prosecutor. She wants to give a special shout out to her loved ones for supporting her and to Mrs. Conley and Mrs. Cass for their support. Senior Representative, Ms. Ruth Cardiel. Our next representative is Senior Representative Esteban Perez Sesmas. Esteban's being escorted, escorted by his mother Maria and is the son of Maria Sesmas and Crescenciano Perez. He is a member of the CHS Marching Band, Wrestling, the Student Council, AV, Skills USA, and the National Spanish Honor Society. In his free time, he volunteers at the at the zoo and trains dinosaur local zoo and trains dinosaurs and naps frequently. Spends time with friends and loved ones. After graduation, he plans to attend college to pursue a degree in architecture. Senior Representative Mr. Esteban Perez Sesmas. Our next representative, Senior Representative Rebecca Skelton. Rebecca's being escorted by her father, Ricky, and is the daughter of Viviana and Ricky Skelton. She's a Troop 6681 thespian and a member of the CHS Chorus and its president and a War Eagle TV member and officer. In her free time, she enjoys serving on her worship team at church, 
singing and playing instruments. She also enjoys making videos and films and after graduation, plans to attend, attend Georgia State University to pursue a degree in film and media. She wishes everyone to have a legendary life. Senior Representative, Miss Rebecca Skelton. Our next representative is Chris Pruitt. Chris is being escorted by his sister, Jordan. He's the son of Kristen and Jason Pruitt. He's a member of the CHS wrestling team and in his free time enjoys spending time outdoors or relaxing at home. After graduation, he plans to attend a technical college and go into the workforce. Senior Representative Chris Pruitt. Our next senior representative is Rebecca Roque. Rebecca is being escorted by her father, Jose, and is the daughter of Maria Eugenia Roque and Jose Roque. She's a member of the War Eagle Marching Band and as a drum major. In her free time, she helps teach children at her church and she enjoys reading, listening to music, and spending time with family and friends. After graduation, she plans to attend UMG to pursue a degree in civil engineering. Senior Representative, Rebecca Roque. Our next representative is Senior Representative Elijah Pruitt. Elijah is being escorted by his mother, Kristen, and is the son of Kristen and Jason Pruitt. He's a member of the CHS varsity football team. He attends church at Lanier Hills, and in his free time, he enjoys spending time with his family. After graduation, he plans to attend college and play football, ideally at the University of Kentucky. Senior Representative, Mr. Elijah Pruitt. Our next senior representative is Sarah Lynn Sims. Sarah Lynn's being escorted by her father, Stephen, and is the daughter of Kelly and Stephen Sims. She's a member of the War Eagle Marching Band and a drumline section leader. In her free time, she enjoys tutoring elementary school students. She also enjoys sewing, fashion, and helping her mother with designing and creating items for her business. After graduation, she plans to attend college to pursue a degree in graphic design with a minor in marketing. She would like to thank her drumline family for always supporting her. Senior Representative, Miss Sarah Lynn Sims. Our next senior representative is Hugh Pruitt. Hugh's being escorted by his mother, Laurie, and is the son of Laurie and Wally Pruitt. He's a member of the CHS cross country team, the basketball team, the track team, FCA, and the principal's council. He attends Lakewood Baptist Church and in his free time enjoys fishing, exercising, and spending time with family and friends. After graduation, he plans to attend UNG and major in finance. Senior Representative Hugh Pruitt. Our next senior representative is Brenna Williams. Brenna's being escorted this evening by her father, Kevin, and is the daughter of Blanca Blanco and Kevin Williams. She is on the LWE basketball team and also runs cross country and track. In her free time, she enjoys going to gym, cooking, and spending time with her friends and family. After graduation, she plans to attend college to pursue, pursue a degree in finance and real estate. Senior Representative Brenna Williams. Oh my God, it's Jake, it's Jake, it's Jake. Our next senior representative is Jake Winings. That's good. Jake's being escorted by his mother, Susan, and is the son of Susan and Keith Winings. He's a member of the Chesapeake War Eagle Marching Band and as a drumline captain. In his free time, he works as a local restaurant, and he enjoys making music, cooking, playing video games, and coding. After graduation, he plans to attend UNG or Kennesaw to pursue a career in computer science or cybersecurity. Senior Representative, Mr. Jake Winings. Oh. 
Now, ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we'd like to recognize Chester T's homecoming royalty. The freshman class representative voted class princess by the members of the class of 2026 is Miss Adeline Romero. The sophomore class representative voted class princess by the members of the class of 2025 is Miss Maddie Conley. The junior class representative voted class princess by the members of the class of 2024 is Miss Victoria Escamilla. The senior class representative voted class princess by the members of the class of 2023 is Miss Ruth Cardiel. The senior class representative voted class prince by the members of the class of 2023 is Mr. Jake Winings. After the senior class court representatives have been selected, the Chester T student body selected one young man to represent them as the 2022 homecoming king. He will be crowned tonight by last year's homecoming king, Mr. Daniel Rouse. The senior class representative voted 2022 homecoming king by the students of Chester T High School is Esteban Perez Sesmas. After the senior class female court representatives have been selected, the Chesapeake student body selected one young lady to represent them as the 2022 homecoming queen. She will be crowned tonight by last year's homecoming queen, Miss Sky Barnett. And this senior class representative voted 2022 homecoming queen by the students of Chesapeake High School is Miss Brenna Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, all the War Eagle fans, let's give another round of applause for all those outstanding students, the king, the queen in their court.
But they score some around the area in the third quarter. It's 28 to 13. Walnut Grove over North Hall. In the third quarter, Stevens County 28, Dawson County 3. Representatives for your homecoming. King and Queen. At halftime, Gainesville 17, Clark Central 3. Awesome. At halftime, it's Lumpkin County 27, Temple 20. At halftime, Cherokee Bluff 7, Madison County 0. And in the second quarter, correction, at halftime, it's Banks County 21, Franklin County 3. At the end of the game. And at halftime, last report we have Jefferson 7, Oconee County 3. kick travels to the end zone to begin the second half we'll bring it out mark it at the 20 yard line for the vikings where they'll have it first and 10. Complete out to Morrison. Ethan Clark on the stop for Chesity. It's a gain of four. Brings up second and six. Throws it over there. I think it's that uh, that line. Why can you do that? It's always like a squat too. Got a little screen pass over to the right side now. And he oh, fumbled the ball. It's he a fumble. fumble. Chesty picks it up. And number 13, Eli Reigns, the junior, with the pickup. That's the defense he won. Oh, wait, wait. He's hearing the big calls. He'd be dead, not down. Was he down? They're saying. He gets Chesty to more people's ball. Yeah, that's the defense you need. So we got a fumble on the play, going to be recovered by Chester T. The market at the 30 yard line, it'll be first down, where he goes. Touchdown! 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 Touchd
above the uh, stretch. the uh, cheerleaders kneeling down. Yeah, I mean, if you want. No. Just suggestions. Like, let me get, let me get them. <laughs> Who's hot? Who's hot? Who's hot? Okay. Get on, get on the refs. Team? Oh, I was like, what? Yeah. Folks, how about a big round of applause for that sticking up, barking down on the field? So 
was hot. Serious, so we were definitely friends with it. Yeah, it's not. No one likes it when they get. When anyone gets hurt in, the, in any level, but especially in a high school game, no one likes it. Unless they're going to be involved. to be out for like a week, a month, the rest of the season. Or they may not be able to play ever, which is a consequence, a consequence for playing, but. Somebody else heard on the East Hall side over there? I don't know. I'll put an ID. I don't know what you know about. But they don't have, like, two significant injuries. Well, we'll be praying for those uh, players and hopefully everything is, gets better for them. Because that's just a, <laughs> a bad sight to see. Because the thing of the game of football. Get wide, get wide. No, if someone can get hurt or get injured, that's just the, the price of playing contact sports football. So, it looks like they do, it, these tall does have another. Injury on their side now. They're pulling out the board for them. So we're gonna, so we're, gonna have, we're gonna take another break and we'll be back when everything gets all situated.
probably just come down the I just want let me take please let me take. I think input two is the shot in my Hey!
All right, we got some uh, some updates about the East Hall players. Apparently, the um, wide receiver number uh, 15. They said he had a the the seizure. He was having seizures on his way after he got hit. You can tell because when he was standing up, walking back to the sideline, he was all yeah. nauseating or like walking he, around. He he was hurt, and then the other one that we believe. Yeah, like he, like he got fell and then somebody landed on top of him on the back of his neck. It could be. We we don't have the correct sources right now, but that's just what we think happened. And what we saw and what we thought would happen. It was all from the um, replays, but. So as of right now, they're, they've got the first good dude, number 15, he's already in the ambulance and gone. And the second dude, they brought the second ambulance in. They're getting ready to load him up, get him to the hospital, make sure he's okay. Uh, so this is going to take a toll on the East Hall, especially on the offensive line. Especially, yeah, especially for the rest of the game, because yeah. they have to deal with that big loss of the wide receiver. Yeah. And that big uh, impact player of the uh, line. Yeah. So. So we're just hoping that everything comes out fine, everything comes out great. We just hope. Everybody stays loose so we can continue this game safely. Yeah. So if we find any more updates, we will keep you updated. But in, well, right now we're going to take it back to the break and we'll be with you in just one moment. All right. Folks, how about another big round of applause for the Shaking Up players? Any updates that might come in that are passed along to us, we'll be sure to pass it along to you as well. We're going to hit the clock, give the players three minutes to warm back up, and we'll resume play.
Updated scores from around the area in the fourth quarter. It's Walnut Grove 38, North Hall 13. In the fourth quarter, Banks County 43, Franklin County 6. In the fourth, it's Mountain View 31, Jackson County 17. In the late in the third quarter, it's Gainesville 30, Clark Central 3. In the fourth quarter, it's Lumpkin County 29, Temple 20. Final score, Stevens County 38, Dawson County 10. And we're back with 35 no, seconds. They're, they're still hunt, warming up. Then they just need to change the clock back. He's tall and ready to go. After that, uh, there we go. 10:55. After there that we go. bad, bad energy that we had to deal with. Let's see if he's tall is not shaken up by it. There we go, good pass. Looks like a good seven yard pass right there. Uh oh, one of our guys didn't get hurt. That's gonna be the main course for the rest of the game. No one get hurt, please, no one else get hurt. So, who was that now? That's two, two people out now. That's, yeah, they lost their main wide receiver. One of the main wide receivers and one of their deep or offensive linemen. Now it's second and three. Oh, good There's defensive stop by Chester T. Number 15. That's a loss of two yards. That was a nice stop. It's going to bring out 
third down. Third, third and five. We still have plenty of football left, and we we still have the band to do after this. this be a long night for us. <laughs> it's gonna be third and five. See what he's talking do right here. Man in motion. Quarterback launch intercepted on the 50 or 49 yard line. Number one, Christian Vargas. He had that. Wow. That big time didn't uh, slow them down. I can tell you that. Now we can uh, extend this lead even more. Yes, see if we can keep this momentum going right here. Uh, it looks like it's going to be a run. Looks like he's going to get me. Oh, he's still going. He is still going. First down to the 30 yard line. He got out of that tackle. <laughs> got like a 15 yard. Got like a Derrick Henry and just shoved them out. But then the pile walked out. Yeah, good 15 yard run. That was more like a Johnny Manziel play against Alabama. When he ran into the pocket, ran out. Yeah. Still. Looked like he was going to throw a little hip. Oh, oh intercepted. Back, it was tilt. That was a, a tipped play like we did. Yes. We tipped the bite or the um, you saw a player tip the play or tip the the ball. And we intercepted it. And then our a chestity player tipped the ball. And we or they intercepted it. So it's now it's a back and forth game now. Yeah. This. Defense is riled up on both sides. If they score on this drive, there might be a... Might be another football game going here. Let's see if we can get another stop or a fumble or... Oh, did a triple yeah. option and they just get stopped. These tall quarterback didn't get nothing. Maybe a yard on that one. Uh-oh. Well, like he's... He's you know, shucking up there for a second. Talking to his coach. It's going to be second and nine with eight minutes and 40 seconds to go. Looks like they're going to do a man in motion. Oh, he pump right. fakes it. Deep. Oh. Intercepted it again. Down to the 30. It is the same. Christian Vargas intercepted again. Ken. That's his second touchdown of the night. Intercepted. And that's a, and he's a junior still. People are calling for flags and And there's a flag that's coming out, that came out. Yeah, it looks like some. But it looks like they picked it up. See if he's gonna throw it, it's out of his pocket. Looks like he threw it in the ground and then picked it up and discussing the call. They're gonna say it was a block in the back, but we're still keeping the uh, the interception. We're just gonna be on a uh, we're just going to be pushed back 10 yards than where it's originally spotted. So now it's going to be at the 40-yard line. So, so far in this third quarter, we've had a fumble and two interceptions. Let's see if we can get something going here. Quarterback keeps it. Good block good in the block. black field. And this we got nine yards on that one. The ball keeps the ball around the far side. It's going to be a second down and one now. That's a good run right there. Hopefully we Josh. can uh, 
extend this lead now. And that was a uh, Josh Kermode running the ball a lot now. Got used Little to all the. Fat. Pump fake. No, he's gonna, run. he's gonna get that first down. He's gonna get right at the line too. And they're gonna say, oh, they're gonna say it's a first it's down. It's a first down. Good run. That was a good run right there, just to get that first. He stretched that out to get that. If they get this win on the, the, the at this game, it's going to be the first win they had in oh, it's another seven, quarterback keep. seven games. Good blocking. Uh, Good block. That's a – he grabbed him around his neck. I wouldn't even call that a sack. He just he wrapped around his neck. And he forced him. We didn't really pull him down from his neck. He just grabbed it from the back. Yeah. Slug him down. So now it's going to be second and nine. Keeping the, looks like it's going to be another quarterback keep. He's going to run some more. He dragged down by He the got line. dragged on that one and no flag. That big East Hall defensive lineman got him there. It's a gain of six, brings up third and three. So now it's going to be. Third and three at the 18 yard line. Looks like they like this the, uh, quarterback keep play. What are they gonna do in this uh, third down now? Third and four. Oh, he almost got a guy going off. Duh. A oh, run. run and he's gonna lose yards yes. on that one. Number 24, Granado got another East Hall player down. Hopefully just got the wind knocked out of him. They can't have to take any precautions now. Everyone's running on the field. Yeah. Like I said, I hope this one just got a, the wind knocked out of him. You can't really say anything now because Everyone runs out on the field now because you don't want to bring out an ambulance for the third time. So we're going to take a timeout and we'll be back when everything gets uh, situated again.
Another nice round of applause for the shaking up player on the field for us tonight, folks. And we're back. And it looks like number 72, it looks like he just got shaken up there. Yeah. But he's getting off. And to bring that the second offensive lineman to replace. It's going to be fourth down, fourth and five. And let's see. I think it looks like they're going to go for it. No, it looks like they're punting. They have a No, they ain't going to be punting. No. Oh, no, I was looking at the wrong person. He lobs it up to number 14, and it is incomplete. I was looking at the wrong side. <laughs> but yeah, now it's a turnover on downs. And East Hall's going to get the ball at the 20-yard line. So two back-to-back -back interceptions come up with zero points. Yes, we had a fumble. And we had a 30-yard touchdown off of that fumble. Then Chesty got an interception and a 15-yard run. And then the East Hall intercepted. And then Chesty intercepted. And then we did a run and then they did a turnover on downs. And it looks like they have a new quarterback. They do. It is number one. It looks like they're going to run it. And get stopped at this I don't know if... Their starting quarterback is taking a break or is injured. We don't know. Might be taking a breather. I don't know. Maybe he's actually hurt. And maybe they just took him out because he's not really doing much. That too. There's a big sack. Oh, he throws oh, it he out. he throws it out. That could be, there was nobody in sight. That could be intentional grounding, isn't it? Number 15, Kaysen Ross got through that line with no effort and almost sacked him. So that's gonna make it a third down now. They're all looking at their Watch uh, the QB wrists. See which play they're gonna do next. Goes back, throws it. Almost oh. enters. I don't know. That the would have been was the third set, third interception in three drives. Yeah. They're gonna bring out their punt team now. No gain on the play. They'll bring up four to the ten for the Vikings. That was apparently Ethan Clark on that stop. That's what brought up the, the fourth down. And they're going to be punting the ball to Christian Gerard, who's already got a touchdown in this game. Oh, good snap. Almost blocked. Oh, muffled it. <laughs> what happened there? What? Oh, How no. was the flag thrown on that? He called a fair catch and they both ran into him. <laughs> they both slipped and they both fell on the ground, but they hit him. So that's that was that's catch catch. It was a kick catch interference. That was a weird hit <laughs> to me. It looks like they tried to avoid it, so they hit each other. <laughs> Somehow hit the. Uh, Christian Gerard with that. I'm sorry, but that was just that was just funny to me. The, the kicker or the kick returner was just or the punt returner was just dink. Oh, yeah, oh I'm sorry. Didn't even budge. I think it didn't even affect him. It just hit him and just bounced Some off dude of him. Flew off of him. <laughs> this ain't soccer. <laughs> oh man, that that was that was too funny. But there was a flag on the. Uh, he did. Did he call it a fair catch? Yes, he did. Okay. We'll look back at the uh, the replay that we have over here. Right here, 
here's the call coming up. And it's going to be on East Hall. Here's the the replay that we have. He calls the he calls the fair catch and just sits there. And they just bounce off of him like he's Superman. <laughs> they look like bullets just bouncing off of him. But it, it was hitting the the punt, uh, kick returner for the that's, punt returner. That's moving them up 15 yards. So it's, ball's going to be on the 32, first and 10. Going to run the ball now. Going to run it. And it looks like you made. There's some pushing and shoving down here. Oh, so number six. He uh, tripped up on number 16, and that's what made him fall down. Oh, okay. And he was already hitting Christian Gerard, which already said it was, it was a fair catch. So, yeah. That's so what it's called it. another run, and he's, he's getting really thrown back nowhere on that one. Did a whole backflip while he was back there. Yeah. Looks like he lost, or that's going to be like third and ten again. I think we've gone back to the line of scrimmage. It's going to make it a third and seven now. He lost no yards. Because it was a forward motion? Yeah. Okay. No gain. So it was third down. Let's see what we can get going here. Oh, dude, there's a wide open. Right oh, middle. He missed him. Are they going to go for it now? That was right in his hands, too. But if you watch it, it looks like he did. He was running the route, but he didn't look, look up in time. That could affect it. So they're actually going for it again. Fourth and eight. That hurry not up. Too, it's too oh. close for a field goal. Or too far for a field goal and too close for a punt. Yeah. It's kind of in between. I'm just trying to get them to jump off, I guess. He almost had one jump off there for a second. Oh, there's a flag. What's the flag for? They still had... Oh. False start for the defense. Or the offense, I'm sorry. It's going to be fourth and four... Fourth and 14. It looks like there's... Uh, fourth and 13. Close. And they're going to... They're going to stay on the field. They're going to go for it. See if we can get a good play right here. I'm trying to get them all to jump off, it looks like. But they're not falling for it. Here we go. Oh, he's getting, going out of the pockets. Oh, good hit. Throw it! And he gets out of, oh, there's the call. He was already out of bounds. And they hit him. That's going to move him up 15, maybe 15 yards and another first down. Most of these third, fourth down plays are being taken first downs because of penalties. Late hits, getting hit while they're out of bounds. That's going to move him up. That or pass interference. Could be any of these. Yeah, it's gonna be a 15 yard penalty, so it's still gonna be. It's actually gonna be fourth and three. Fourth and three. It was a 10 yard penalty. And they, re they redo the, the down that they were on. Oh, okay, okay, I got you. It's crazy, it's still the, the third quarter. I thought it'd be over by yeah, now. Another, they call it a timeout? Yep. All right. And we're gonna kinda call a timeout as well. And we'll be back with you in just a moment.
here we go. We are back in fourth and three. They're going for it. Here they go. And he holds on, holds on and gets sacked. It's going to be another turnover on down. The second half, it's all been defense so far. All the all that East Hall needs to do is score, which none of us could get to do in this second half. I know it's just it's been a defensive or a defensive game. And this is what they're gonna keep their. Wow, he way overthrew that one. Probably going towards the sideline. He almost kind of looks like a. A young Cam Newton with that number one jersey on right there, doesn't he? Yes, he does. He's got, looks like he's got the height for it. So. That's gonna be a second down now. Let's see if we can get the, he's running, there he goes, out of the pocket. Oh, almost oh, intercepted, and it's for the, so that's a third and that would be that would be his third interception if he would have got that number one that would probably be like a record then yeah three interceptions in one night he probably wishes he would have had that yeah would have placed his spot in the record books for the chastity record books yeah So now it's going to be third and ten. Going off. Just lobbed it Intercepted. Number 15. And he's going. going. Back to the ten. And it is a touchdown. touchdown. Pick six. Pick six. For Kaysen Ross, the sophomore. At the 30-yard line. You know that interception was a bound up club. He got throwing it to any of our players in they kept dropping it till now. You know it would have happened soon. Yeah. A pick six for number 15. We got some uh, cool sideline footage now. They're going on for the what? A two oh, point conversion. A two point, and he gets pulled down. So they didn't make the two point conversion. Now it's a a 15 point game. 27 to 12. Now on paper, it doesn't seem like a close game. It doesn't even seem like this far of a lead. No. It, if you would have just read it off the sheets, you thought it would have been like. 10 to 10. It would look like a blowout from East Hall, the way that they were playing, but War Eagles came to play tonight, and this is the win that they need to start off their season. Because yeah, this would be the first win in almost seven games. Yeah. If they can keep this momentum going, the defense has just been unstoppable tonight. They had a few mishaps in the second, or the first and second quarter. But it looks like that halftime speech got them pumped up, ready to go. Off to the kick. Good kick, and it is going to be in the end zone again. So, there's a flag. There's a flag back in the backfield. I didn't think he could get a flag in the kickoff. Unless somebody was offside or something. I didn't, I didn't see it. <laughs> there it was. Hey, it was right. Told you I know a little bit about football. <laughs> <laughs> With still four minutes and 36 seconds into the third, third quarter. With a score of 27 to 12. War Eagles. 
by now it probably should have been the end of the game, but. Yeah, we had a few. Oh, they're gonna do a re-kick. We had a few um, emotional injuries that's held us for that's held us back, but we're getting through this. And maybe like 11, 12 o'clock when we get done. But we'll get through this. So here they are doing the re-kick. Hopefully they don't kick it out the stadium now. It looks like they just moved them up. See if we can kick this one off from the end zone. Almost. Got it to the five. Let's see how far East Hawk can run it back. And he and will stop, stop at the 15. And he's not taking the kind gesture by uh, Number four. Tyler Humphreys. Yeah. He's trying to help him out. And he refuses for help. So... They're just not going to play for uh, they, They're not playing for fun now. East Hall wants the point. Let's see. It looks like they're bringing back their old quarterback, number 18. Number one. I guess they didn't want to put him back in. Little short pass to uh, number three, and he gets about four or five yards. That was a game of six. That wasn't that wasn't that bad. Back to pass. He gets all the pressure oh, in the world. Oh, tips him. Uh-oh, he's down now. Oh, he gets back up. Slowly getting back up. He's been taking a lot of hits this game. He's slowly moving now. Oh, he's been a slowly moving. Third and four, four. Getting the play. Comes back in. Getting ready to hit. Runs the, the ball this time. Runs and gets, gets nothing. That's going to bring a fourth down now. Fourth. Looks like it's going to be it's fourth and four. Here comes the putt team. So Chesity's defense stops him again. Now Gerard is back in deep to receive. He's getting ready to punt it. Oh, good punt. He's calls for calls a fair for catch. And no one falls this time. <laughs> Down at the 42, 43 yard line. Let's see if the War Eagles can get something going again. I think after that last drive, they're all, they're all fired up wanting to blow this rest of the team out. Cherokee Bluff got their first win of the season. They barely beat Madison County 20 to 19. Wow. Let's see how uh, North Hall is doing. They got they got beat 38 to 20. Wow. North Hall did. They're 0 and 3. Yeah, North Hall is not really doing so hot this season. And that's that's our rivalry game, so 
There's a false start, little screen pass to number nine. Got, got that five game. yards back and more. So what's... Let's see how... Uh, how the thing is going. Now it's going to be second and six. Good pass right there, that screen pass. Second and six, they run the ball. Run the ball right at the middle, and he's still going. Down, looks like at the 49 yard line. It's like a five yard rush, it looks like. Uh oh, it looks like there's some bickering in the, on the line between the East Hall and Chesity. Well, we do have a pretty even matchup. Their record all in all is five and five. So they've, their record is kind of tied. Yeah. Going with the hurry up offense, third and two. See if they can get this first down going. Go Keeps right it right in the middle and, and he's, he's got the first down and looks like he got three yards on that one. Good run. He spun out of that. Yeah. yeah. Down. They're keeping the drive alive. I'll give them that. They're wearing this East Hall defense down. It's going to be first and 10. Do a quick pass. Quick pa oh, good pass. To number 14, Elijah Pruitt. Good 15 yards to Elijah Pruitt. That's going to be another Pruitt. first down. Back to back. Now, Elijah Pruitt and Christian Gerard is but their top players for the game. Yeah. Elijah Pruitt's been catching all the the clutch passes, and Christian Gerard's just been finishing all the touchdowns. Yeah. Another timeout. So it looks like the Vikings have only got one timeout left. We're not even in the fourth quarter yet. And we're gonna take a timeout as well. And we'll get to you back when the timeout is over. And we're back with Chesity getting their first down with 124 in the third quarter. With a score of 27 to 12. See if they can add on to it. Run right up the middle. Don't look like he, look he maybe back to the line of scrimmage. That's what it looks like as well. Yeah. You know, it's it's been rough on a uh, Pedro Vargas because that's like their main option. Chesity is is to run the ball. Yeah. But he's been getting out of it. Oh, dude's what? Oh. If he was just a few steps closer, he would have got that. That would have been his third touchdown. That would have been his third touchdown if he would have. Oh, he was just a few steps short. Wasn't he the one that also got three intercept or two interceptions so far? Number one. No, number seven is Gerard, Christian Gerard. He's got the two touchdowns. And then Christian Vargas has two interceptions. Here we go with the height. Oh, dude left him. Oh, uh. Same play almost. They're saying incomplete. And there's Elijah Pruitt with a close catch. Yeah, they're saying it's incomplete. He may have dropped it at the end. That's what. So it's going to be fourth down and 10. And they're going to go for it once again. 
There's the snap. Nope. Trying to see if they're going to call them all. Man in motion. Looking Going for, deep. Looking for number 13. Just Eli a Reigns. little to the left. Yeah, he over, overthrew him on that one. Most of these plays have been on the right side of the field so far. Yeah. They've been punting it and they've been stopping them all, all on the 20, 30 yard line. So number 18 for East Hall Viking is come back in. Oh, it's oh, a yeah. fumble. It's oh, a he's still fumble. going. He's still, still going. going. And Chesty War Eagles have it. Down to the 10 yard line. That was Casey Gross, the sophomore. It looks like he just landed on his head. But that ball has been like bouncing. It bounced for like five seconds out in the open. Yeah. That was a great, great catch for a pickup. I'm telling you, this Chesty's defense has got something going tonight. If we can take it into the next game, it's Cherokee Bluff. Yeah. We might upset upset them as well at their at their stadium. Now let's see. Defense got the ball back for them. Let's see if War Eagles can punt punch it in. Here we go, quarterback. Key. Quarterback sneak. And he's gonna get all the way down to so looks like the four or the three. And there's 19 point, there's 19 seconds left in this third quarter. It's gonna be down to the four. But there was a flag that we didn't see. It was a 10 yard penalty. Oh, uh, it's gonna be on. It is on Chesity. It was uh, a holding. So that's gonna be called back. Not the way we were wanting to go. But we have a pretty safe lead, so it's not like we're making a dent or anything. Yeah. By going backwards 10 yards. It's gonna be first and 17. He went a quick Look, pass and off got his Looked like it was off his helmet, and there's still some pushing and shoving in between eight and 24. And 24 there. Remember uh, uh, Jason Granados, one of the um, Esau players. Apparently, they got some beef going on. So that's going to make it a second and 17. With 16.1 seconds still in the third quarter. This has been like the, the longest third, third quarter. <laughs> That's what I'm about to say. This quarter is taking a little for a little screen pass to number seven. Wide open. And gets pushed out of bounds. He gets shoved. He's tall player did. That's gonna be at the 10 yard line. That's gonna make it a second, a third and eight, nine. Third and nine. Let's see if the War Eagles can keep it going. They got that. Oh, if they would have snapped it. And that first down is on the uh, two yard line. So all they have to do is either make the first down or score the touchdown. Yeah. Here's the quarterback keep, and he's not gonna get it. And that's going to take us into the fourth quarter. We are in the fourth. And it looks like Chesity is winning 27 to 13, or 27 to 12. Looks like 64, like he's hurt. Look at him walking off. He's kind of looking a little woozy. But Chesity's going to get the ball on the 
opposite 11, where it's going to be fourth and nine. We're going to take a break, and we'll see you back when the fourth quarter starts. And we're back, and it looks like they're gonna attempt a field goal. At least get at least three more points on the board. This is Isaiah Glez with a kick. Here's a snap, and it's straight through. So now it's 12 to 30. It's an 18 point lead now. A two score lead. Huh? No, sir. That's. And we're back with the with the kickoff. We got number we got David Diaz with the kick again. And here is the kickoff. This is the start of the fourth quarter now. Good kick. Right at the one. Right at the one. Is he going to go? And you He's don't get nowhere. At the 15 yard line. Down to the 15. And that's where we're going to. That's where we're going to start this second or the, the fourth quarter. Maurice Hall's fourth quarter. Down by 18. War Eagles are, hopefully this defense can come. That's that's three scores away. So. It looks like it's gonna be a run up the middle and it looks like nothing. Maybe a, maybe a yard. The um, Chelsea City defense has really, really stepped up. Oh, I don't know yeah. how many times we said it, but it's yeah, really stepped up for the first past two games. That's going to be the, second ten. Yeah, they didn't, they didn't get a yard on that one. They didn't get no momentum on that one. Like he's going, oh, he's got a dude he's wide, wide open. open. 25, oh, and he overthrew him again. That dude would have been a touchdown right there. Nobody was on him. No one was even in the line of sight. Yeah, that was, I mean. If that was, if that, if that was a perfect dot, that would have been, that would have been, been gone. Would, that would have been gone. That would have been a, almost what, a, almost a 90 yard or 80 yard touchdown pass right there. Here's the band with the I believe that we will win chant. It's gonna be third and ten. 
clears the pass. Bombs it right down. Oh. Pass is incomplete. Fourth down again. His defense is, like you said, his defense has actually stopped them. And it's going to be fourth and 10 on the 17, so they're going to have to punt. They haven't scored in the second half yet, have they? No. In the second half, it's been all chastity. One 30 yard touchdown, a 15 yard run. An interception for a touchdown. Yeah, East Hall has not answered anything for the for third. Game. For the third. Here's their, a punt. Their last touchdown was in the second quarter. And it's a 65-yard oh, touchdown. Oh, yeah, that big touchdown through in the middle? Yes. That's all that, that was the last touchdown they got? That was the last touchdown that they got. So. We'll see how, what they get in the, uh, with the fourth quarter with uh, 11 minutes left to play. Let's see. Here's the pass. He's got a dude wide open, number 17, but he runs out of the pocket. He gets flushed out, and he's losing he it. But there's a two flags. He also had number 12 sitting there right, wide open. Right Edwin Rodriguez. He was sitting there wide open, just standing there. Yeah. But there's two flags. I don't know if it was going to be holding on offense, offense or, or defense. Or a late hit out of bounds. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be holding on offense. They're going back at least another five yards. No. It looks like close to 15. 15 yards? What in the world? What's that? Uh, that's going to be a... They're going in the wrong direction. That's like a 30 second, uh, first and 30. First and 31. Wow. Yeah, you might as well just run it. Quick right out uh -oh. the middle gets... Looks, looks like one of our... Looks like Chesty Morgan will... Players down now. Well, he looks like he's just got the wind knocked out of him. Well, they got another, they brought another ambulance, so we got one just in case. I think he's just got cramps. Looks like his legs are getting cramped up. Yeah, because you saw him, his, his hands are all going everywhere. But we're going to take a break. We'll be back when everything is fixed. Nice round of applause for the shaking up player. And we're back, and it looks like he just had like a cramp or something in his leg. So, nothing too serious. Yeah. Little screen pass right here. To Elijah. Good. He throws off a person. Oh, keeps and he's going. wide open. Oh, that's a, that's a horse. Where's the flag? He pulled him from the back. The only way to keep him from to getting that touchdown, he threw him. And now another East Hall player is hurt. Let's see, that was at the 38. That EMT's having to run across the field multiple times. 
That's about a 25 yard screen pass. They're just not playing safe, I guess. They're all trying to fight for the points. Yeah, he's having cramps. They're trying to get him to get that cramp out. I know those hurt. Oh, yeah. They rent you from walking, but that's just, especially when you're running and you're in a full contact sport right here. Cramps hurt. That's why they do practices every day. Trying to get used to it. Or like probably not used to it, but more like how I, how else to explain it. Yeah. But we'll just take another break and we'll get back when everything gets fixed. Nice round of applause for the shaking up Viking on the plate. And we're back, and it looks like number 11 was just shaking up just a little. Look, he had a little muscle cramp in his leg. He's limping off, but... Everything seems to be fine. He's not in that much pain, so that's good. Well, it's first and first and ten. They got at least thirty yards on that. They got their uh, stuff back because of that big screen pass from Elijah. Yeah. Now we're gonna take a big. They're gonna take a run right up the middle, right up the edge. And it's going to go down to the five-yard line. That was number 14, Elijah Pruitt, what we were just talking about. From the 31-yard line all the way down to at least, what, the seven? Yeah, a quick hurry play by to Elijah. And he's getting stopped right at the line. And that's gonna that's gonna make it a second a goal with ten fifty left to play. Nine fifty. Nine fifty. Keep this clock running. If they score this touchdown, I think the Vikings I think they're done. This other defense is already done. Run out the pocket. And he He's intercepted in the end zone. But is the did, was, um, was he did, out of bounds? Did Josh Kerbot step out? I guess they're not even gonna review that he stepped out of bounds. So that's gonna put East Hall uh at the twenty. I personally thought he just stepped out. Yeah. I mean, the way it looked, it looked like he, his foot was out of bounds before he threw it. But 
We're not seeing what the refs see, apparently. Yeah. See, number 18 quarterbacks back in. Or is that? That doesn't look like number 10. That's, one, that's another quarterback. No, it's number 18. Long pass. Good Deflected. defense. Good, good deflection right there on the defense. By Braden Bennett, the senior. These quarterbacks and safeties have been deflecting almost every pass yeah. in the second half. You can't get nothing with these players no more. Here, just with a quarterback run. Quarterback run, and he, and he gets, gets nothing. No, he got. Oh, the fumble! Oh, the fumble. There's a fumble! They a fumble for a touchdown! By Elijah Pruitt. Wow! He didn't get his touchdown from rushing, he got his touchdown from a fumble. Wow! Yeah, because I didn't even hear the. Uh, the whistle. Yeah, the whistle didn't blow, so they just. He just picked it up, but he could see it. That was a great, great fumble. And that puts his lead way out of a pocket for uh, East Hall. Wow. Looks like we're gonna attempt the two point again. And now they're gonna go back to the, the field they're goal. gonna steal a field goal. Yeah, I don't think it'd really be any matter for a two point. And it is good. 37 to 12. That's 24 points. Wow. A 24 point lead. I think after the injuries to their teammates, I think the these tall Vikings just kind of. I wouldn't say gave up, but they just lost their, their spirit on that one. Yeah, they're all, they're all probably going to the, the players that are in the, in the ambulances. So, and this defense has stepped up tremendously with interceptions. Fumbles. Fumbles. Let's see how many fumbles we've gotten so far. I think there was two so far. Yeah, it was two fumbles. Almost, it would have been like almost five interceptions. Let's see, there's been one. Uh, let's see. It's the kick with 9.20 left to play. Okay, you gonna let that go into the end zone. And they're gonna start back on the 20 yard line again. So I remember there was one where it was just like interception, back to interception, back to interception. Yeah, that was <laughs> in the third quarter. It was in the third, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we have f two fumbles, two, three, four, five, and now six. Interceptions and actually, yeah, two fumbles. So eight turnovers, all in all. In all defense, yes, but some of them have been with East Hall. With East Hall. Intensity. Good little screen pass, to number ten. Good for about nine yards. How many turnovers has a? Let's see, Chastity. Or East Hall got. East Hall. Uh, let's see. I think it all happened in the third quarter. Here's second and one. He's gonna try and run for it, and, and he's he, gets sacked. He gets sacked. Now it's fourth and one now. So our defense has had one, or third and two. Yeah. Three. Third and 11. 
And they still have their their original quarterback still in. So I think Chesty has had four interceptions tonight. And they're running out of the pocket. And he throws, it out. throws it way out of bounds. I know number one has had two interceptions tonight. Number seven's had two touchdowns. And now it's fourth down still. Here's the fourth down. Here's the punt. Almost blocked. And this gets out right of the 50. Right of the 50. All they have to do now is just, is just run the ball and just pull it, just, just eat the clock. Yeah, that's really all I have to do. Yeah, all they gotta do is just eat the clock. Here's the first and 10 on the 47. Spin move, and looks like he got pushed back four yards, five yards. So a loss of downs on that one. So it's going to be second 15. Yeah, they're just going to let that clock get taken down. Oh, we got a little screen pass. And they would have put more points on the board. Oh, he owns them out of the 50. That was Edwin Rodriguez, the sophomore. It looked like he was trying to sling him while he was out of bounds. And that's what it looks like, too. The ref was right there. They could have they could have caught a penalty on that one, but they didn't. Right at the 48, 47 yard line. And that's good. The loss of three brings up fourth and 15 for the War Eagle.
punt travels inside the 10 yard line. It'll be first and 10 for the Vikings. Lucas Pruitt on the carry for the Vikings. Carries it across the 20-yard line to the 22. First and 10 for the Vikings. Hand off to Christian. Number 23, Lucas Pruitt on the carry. Again, a five brings up second and five for the Vikings. contest. Both fans will be performing on the field. Harrison's pass is incomplete. Intended out to Pruitt. They'll bring up fourth and five now for East Hall. foul called against the Vikings. Vargas with the carry, Brock with the stop.
handoff to Vargas as he works his way across the 45 yard line to around the 47. Brings up third and five for the War Eagles. Pass is complete out to Vargas. Carries the ball across the 40 yard lines around the 37. It's enough for a first down, War Eagles! Keeps the ball around the right side. Evans on the stop. Brings up second and 13. Gerard. He's out of bounds around the 36 yard line. We're going to bring up third and eight now for the War Eagles. PAT is up and good. Once again, folks, don't forget, at the conclusion of the game, both bands will be performing. We invite you to stick around for their performances. Kickoff travels to the end zone for a touchback. Bring it out to the 20-yard line where the Vikings will have it with 150 remaining in the contact contest.
Lewis with the carry. Charlie Bradshaw on the stop for Chesapeake. The market just shy of the 35 at the 34 yard line will be first and 10. Stop for Chesity. The gain of three brings up second and seven. <laughs> Hand off to Pruitt. Scampers across midfield, brought down by Bradshaw. All right, we may be back, but we just missed a. It was like a 25-yard run right there. What was that touchdown that we missed on? It was a Pruitt with a 40-yard run touchdown. All right, another run for number 23. Looks like he got another nine yards off of that. And they're just kind of slowly drain this clay, uh, the clock off. Yeah. 20 seconds left. With 20 seconds, and I think that's going to be the game, ladies and gentlemen. Your War Eagles have the first win uh, of the 2022. Now oh, they're going to try to get one more pass or one more play in within eight seconds. The War Eagles are going to have the. Yep, they're going to try to run it up the middle, and that is going to be top game. Chesity has their first win in almost nine games. The final score, 44 to 12. That was a great, great defensive and offensive game, actually. I mean, their offense did put up some points. Their defense also put up a lot of points, so. With two interceptions by number one, and one of them going back for a touchdown. Two touchdowns from number seven, Jared. Christian Gerard. Christian Gerard, I'm sorry. Two touchdowns on him. A 14 yard pass from him. And a 30 yard touchdown pass from him. So I would I believe he would be the player of the game. Oh, but it's a tie between him and and Elijah. And Elijah Vargas, because he had two interceptions, one for a touchdown. So Elijah Pruitt. Pruitt, yeah, Pruitt got a 15-yard to a touchdown. So good game by the War Eagles. We've got a victory, bringing their the record to two or oh and, or one and one two. And two with East Hall now is two and one. Yes. So. Next week they take on Cherokee Bluff. Which is two and one. They actually they're they're one and two as well. They won their first game tonight, nineteen to twenty against Madison County. Yep. So hopefully if we keep our thing like this, with we'll the, win. With the War Eagles defense stepping up and the offense stepping up, I think we have a good chance to come out with this conference pretty good. So All right. from the Lynn Control Complex. We're gonna we're gonna leave it with the band. Both bands actually. Both East Hall and Chesty. Bands are gonna be performing for the end of the night. We're gonna be signing off. It's been great having us. <laughs> <laughs> and hope you have a good night, a good weekend. Go War Eagles. Go War Eagles.
players are going to be like. We're all going to be. Well, here, um, why don't we keep. Channel one and channel two. What? What do you? What? Are, you can hear me now. Okay. Never mind. I'm just...
Ladies and gentlemen, we invite you to join us back in the stands to enjoy your marching band's halftime shows. Now entering the field is the East Hall Viking Band. The staff is under the direction of Vince Tancredi. Staff includes Justin Baker, Kyle Bigwit, Jacob Alexandrian, Jamie Hancock, Ben Vickery, Tyler Howell, and Lauren Bratt. The band will be performing works by Michael Jackson, Stephen Renicki, System of a Down, and Metallica. Drum majors, Blanca Garcia, Robert Delgado, and Carla Lerma. Is your band ready? You may now take the field for your halftime performance. Thank you, drum majors.
retreat. Never surrender. This is the Empire.